100 episodes. Everything EFL is a range of fun, engaging podcasts to help EFL teachers plan, engage their students and breathe some life into their lessons. You can listen to this interview with Erin and you can also listen to Everything EFL podcast. There's a link here on this page. Go and check it out. Let's go. Erin, thank you for accepting this interview today. I'm uh, glad you're here. Let's just dive in. And the first question is, uh, can you tell us a bit about yourself? Anything you'd like to share? Okay, what can I tell you? I'm 25 years old and I absolutely adore RuPaul and Dolly Parton. They are my heroes. (laughs) I'm married to an Irishman, hence I live in Ireland. Um, We live just outside Dublin in the countryside, which is amazing because I love things that grow, flowers and plants. And that's one of my passions. Like a lot of people, I got into it in lockdown. Yeah, I just, I love serving teachers. That's kind of my my professional passion as well. That's kind of where I want to go in my career. Let's start from the very beginning yeah. with your story, with your journey. Why did you choose to become an EFL teacher? Oh, um, I just, I'm one of those people who never really knew what they wanted to do, but I always had the idea of teaching somehow but mainstream education never really appealed to me I'm very much um, the kind of person who wants to teach motivated pupils <laughs> and yeah uh, call me lazy if you like but I got the chance to do my CELTA course after I came back from traveling I didn't really know what to do this was I think 2002 now and my parents offered to pay for my CELTA course which was a total result So I did that and I really enjoyed it. It really got like the, you know, stoked the fire and my belly, kind of one that I never knew I had, to be honest. (laughs) And I truly believe that everybody's creative in their own way, but they just have to find what that is. And I never really thought I was very creative up until that point. And then suddenly I did the kind of the baptism of fire, the six week summer school experience, um, which is what a lot of teachers do when they start. I can see you nodding there. And something just happened in like the first or second week, like sort of the damn burst. And my brain was just full of ideas and activities and like I could barely sleep. And it's just been fairly wired ever since. And that was nearly 20 years ago now. I actually did my CELTA in Dublin at Kaplan. And then, of course, I worked for them. Uh, I mean, I don't know why, of course, but (laughs) it so happened that I worked for them. At the summer school in 2014 and 2015, um, at that point, I had been a teacher for uh, five years already, but I got myself that quite quite late. And yes, I think summer school, especially if you have a good director of studies that can help you when you're just starting out, I think it's a great experience and, and I loved it. Yes, it was great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So over the years, you've worked with children, adults, what ages have you worked with and which ones do you like working with? Uh, I've worked from sort of seven years old to 70 years old. My first proper job was in Poland and I was teaching, you know, young children to adults. I've taught asylum seekers and refugees as well in South London, like a lot of sort of Sudanese, Ethiopian, Eritrean, Somalian, Polish as well. And, but to be honest, I like adults. Like I said earlier, I want students who are motivated and I've taught pretty much every nationality there is. Um, I, I'm sure you know that in different schools, you tend to have certain nationalities. Yes. So at the moment in the school I'm at, we have a lot of Turkish students, which is lovely. In my last job, we had loads and loads of Japanese students because there was an agency who had contacted all the universities. So they came over to Dublin university groups and that was also very interesting because the Japanese you know lovely and polite though they are very hard working and disciplined very very culturally shy of speaking and making mistakes yeah so I had to find ways of creating an environment in class where they were comfortable enough to talk and also to sort of build their confidence and self-esteem and that's one of the things when I started out like on my social media journey 
trying to become an authority on social media for other teachers, that was one of the things that I really was focusing on is building students' confidence. And it's kind of since gone somewhere else, but that's definitely one thing that I feel very passionately about because, you know, we often put the student at the center of the lesson, but we don't always put the human at the center of the lesson. And it's very easy to dismiss students who are very quiet. You know, maybe they don't want to speak, maybe they're lazy, but you have to ask yourself why, why are they not speaking? And then try and get through to them and create some kind of rapport and relationship with them, but also a relationship with each other in the class as well. Community is extremely important. And the more they share, the more they open up. And you'd be amazed what results you can get within six or 10 weeks if you get it right. Yes, I see you're so passionate about the topic. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I also prefer working with adults. Really, working with kids scares me. I never wanted to be a school teacher. I tried it a bit and having 30 children in the class, I was like, no, <laughs> get mm. me out of the here. <laughs> I was quite afraid. So because you said that you started your social media journey, I know that you have your own podcast. Can you please tell us a bit about it? Sure. It's called Everything EFL and it's available on any platform. And I started it a few years ago just as a bit of a laugh with a friend of mine, Shane. We kind of just sort of came up with the idea together. And if you do subscribe to it, you'll notice that the episodes start from 31. There's no 1 to 30 because yeah. those episodes have since been archived because they were recorded with Shane. And they are really funny. Like the whole idea was to go into it with a bit of a different angle because like I find that I hate to say this but a lot of the EFL podcasts out there are a little bit dry and we just wanted to introduce something a bit different an element of humor and a bit of banter and it was great but it was also like a total hot mess you know it was quite sort of a little bit unprofessional at times maybe a little bit over the mark so <laughs> during lockdown Shane couldn't commit unfortunately. So I decided I'm going to carry it on. I really enjoy this. I found I was very passionate about it. And I was also doing kind of the marketing on Instagram and everything for it as well. And I really wanted to continue. So I did. So I kind of rebranded, made a new logo and it recorded like a new introduction and all of that kind of stuff and just gave it a much more polished professional edge, bought my microphone, <laughs> you know, yeah. edited. Like Shane never did any editing. He just like, we recorded and it then it uploaded as is. So it's yeah, just it's... a little bit more professionally produced now, even though it is just me. So yeah, that's it. And it's just like, there's a lot of teachy tips in there. There's, there's lots of practical takeaways and a lot of teacher love as well, because, you know, I do believe that teachers... Are quite hard on themselves we put a lot of pressure on ourselves we beat ourselves up most schools we work for don't value us as much as they should so i believe i think it's my responsibility to just give you a little bit of teacher love and inspiration and just remind you that you're amazing and you're doing a great job as well so is this the part that you mostly enjoy about being able to help efl teachers is this what motivates you to to do this to continue with this project it's partly I mean, I love, like I said, creativity. Everyone's creative. I believe teachers are super creative and it's just a creative outlet for me. And it's just one way to disseminate a larger amount of information than say a video online, which I also do. Um, but my biggest passion would be actually teacher training and having face-to-face -face classes with teachers. And the teachers on the Erasmus projects that I work with are, tend to be from mainstream schools. So my kind of idea now, um, if we're going to get into the sort of the business side of things, is my niche is going to be sort of bridging the gap between my knowledge, but with the everyday realities of Yes. those teachers because we teach them loads of stuff but at the end of the day they could be with us for four weeks six weeks how much of the stuff they learn will they practically be able to implement given they have a 50 minute window of time to deliver loads of content and then with the added pressure of exams and everything at the end so um, I've got a very exciting project coming up in September. I'm going to go to French Guyana for a few weeks and I'm going to be working in a high school alongside the teachers. So I'm going to be observing them and seeing what their issues are and then addressing those issues directly and seeing how I can cut down the overwhelm and the stress of their job with super practical tips and takeaways and things like that. So that's kind of where I'm going with my business. I want to bridge that gap, like I said, between my knowledge and the everyday realities. But I do want to keep the podcast going as well and my social media and videos and, you know, 
I could branch out in all sorts of different directions. I've done a couple of yeah. master classes, you know, I've got lots of different things coming up. I want to make a book with sort of paperless activities and, you know, got millions of ideas. It's just like sort of focusing on one, <laughs> creating yes. it as a product and then hopefully being able to kind of sell it in some way. Yeah. So my yeah. head's kind of just exploding with, with ideas. And ideas. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I always say we don't have enough hours in the day. We don't. <laughs> like I, if, if, Every time I hear someone say something, I'm like, oh, yes, this would be a great idea. And when would I, I wouldn't ever have time to get to do this. So this would kind of be like your business, but at present you are still employed. Are you considering transitioning from employed to self-employed and just being your own boss? That's the goal. I have a goal to leave my job by the end of the year. But it really does depend. Like I said, once I do this French Guyana thing, I'd like to be able to create some kind of product, maybe a digital course or maybe a consultancy or something where I can actually sell something, a service to people. That's kind of the goal. And then, like I said, passive income with maybe like a book idea or something like that. But um, yeah, the goal is the end of the year. So I've been building authority online for a couple of years with my posts and my videos and my podcast and the podcast is all part of that as well you know it attracts people yeah. so it's just a slow build it's a very slow build but hopefully something's gonna happen soon you were talking about social media and how you are present on different platforms how did you learn everything did you go to courses did you study by yourself was it difficult how was it with the podcast, I actually got a little bit of help from a friend of mine, Erin Myers, who has a podcast called The Educator's Mindset, which is more geared towards mainstream school teachers. But we connected on Instagram and we became great friends. In fact, I'm hoping to meet her in a few weeks for the first time when I go to America. Um, but she told me about the bright microphone to use, the fact that there's some editing software. She gave me the name of that. And then with sort of everything else, like the marketing and sort of creating business ideas, I actually have had a business coach. She's very, very active on Instagram and LinkedIn. She has different courses you can do. She does one-to-one -one business coaching and stuff. So I kind of started with her. I haven't finished with her yet by any means, but I would recommend, you know, if you really are at sea and you don't know where to start, there are plenty of people online who whose sole focus is helping teachers create their own businesses. So I would say make use of the free content first, find who yeah. you really like and who really aligns with you and your beliefs, because, you know, one person, you know, you, you might love one person. I might hate them it just you have yeah. to find someone who aligns with your personality and then pursue a little bit more like invest you're going to have to invest a little bit you can't just unless you're supremely gifted or lucky you have to invest yeah. <laughs> in your business and get a little bit of coaching and a little bit of professional help I think Yes, I do understand that transitioning from employed to self-employed and finding your own student is quite difficult, starting your business. So there are no resources, let's be honest. Mm. Uh, but at one point, if you want to grow, you're going to have to invest. And I have been working with loads of coaches. I'm really passionate about the legal part of businesses, especially for teachers, you know, because I always say that we teach from the heart and yes. you know when students come to us and they have certain problems financial problems we always put or at least it was my case I put them first and uh, um, I didn't focus on me that much at one point but we need to learn to be fair with everyone so I love this part of the legal side of things and also the tech side of things I, I studied IT and maths before I studied languages and I really like <laughs> building stuff and finding all sorts of apps so that's uh, the yes, worst I part for me <laughs> yeah <laughs> I hate the tech side of things hate it <laughs> yeah I really liked it and when I when I studied math and IT I hated math and IT I didn't understand why why I was there <laughs> <laughs> Why did I choose this? But in time, it makes sense. And now yeah. I always think that every time we learn something, maybe at one point we find it useless, but one day we are going to find it useful and we'll be able to use it. 
So you said about Instagram, for example, I'm actually going to work a bit more with teachers who want to start, grow or scale their own businesses, like freelancers or small businesses. And uh, do you think Instagram is a place where teachers of English as a foreign language, for example, should be to find more students? Yes, I actually like my niche is a bit different. I try and work with teachers. Yeah. However, there's a huge teaching community on Instagram. I was very resistant to joining Instagram for a long time because I had this idea that it was all very narcissistic and, you know, just people showing off their gym bodies. But there are different communities on there. So, you know, my Instagram now is 97% teachers, 2% friends and 1% drag queens. So it's brilliant. And... <laughs> um I find that other teachers are very supportive. So if you need advice or if you're looking to get a bit of inspiration for marketing, there's no harm in stealing and adapting. Absolutely not. But there are lots of teachers on Instagram who are looking for students. Definitely. Yes. Yes. I actually have an Instagram account. I think I have only once posted. And when I did, it was a mistake. So I posted on Facebook and it went to my Instagram account. I don't know how. And one of my students sent me a message and said, well, uh, Val, I saw that you have your post also on Instagram. That's great because all the young people are there. And I was like, what? <laughs> all the <laughs> young people are there? Oh, thank you. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I, I was not in the place where I was supposed to be. Now, towards the end of our conversation, how would you encourage teachers who are just starting out? Because, well, you've been a teacher for many years and you have experience now and you're moving into something else. But the ones that just qualify and they're like, where can I find students? How am I going to teach this? How am I going to teach that? Mm -hmm. Oh, so many things. Firstly, lean on your more experienced colleagues. Don't be afraid to ask for help. They know a million little tips, tricks, games, activities. Another thing would be, now this is easier if you're in an English speaking country, but I scour charity shops for word games and games. Amass a collection. If not, build a collection of board games that you find online. There's, there's millions of them. ISL Collective is very good for that. Yes. What else? Listen to everything EFL podcast, most definitely. Yeah, just create or join teaching communities. If you're still on Facebook, tons of Facebook groups. Instagram, you know, there are loads of teachers posting videos. LinkedIn is a fantastic place to network as well. And, you know, I get teachers DMing me on Instagram, asking me for advice. And, you know, I'll always be happy to help. And I'm quite sure I'm not the only one, you know. Um, another yeah. piece of advice would be don't just rely on what you've learned in your teaching course. That's just the beginning. There's always something new to learn. There are lots of different approaches. One um, I would recommend is the lexical approach. Have a look at that. It's very yes. useful. Don't just think of language as single words. We learn through units of language. So next time you're pre-teaching that vocabulary or you're looking at interesting words in a transcript or a reading, look at the words around it. Can you make a phrase out of it? Even something like if you're teaching something elementary like shower, okay? It's not just shower, it's take a shower or have a shower. Give your students a phrase they can work with. Don't just deliver content. Think about building trust, rapport, relationships, yeah. community, work on your students' mindset as well. I do a lot of mindfulness stuff, even if it's just like get up, stretch, breathe, uh, discuss an inspirational quote. Can you find little mindfulness quotes, little mindfulness activities? All of these things really help because the more confident and self-assured your students are, the more they will learn because they need to be relaxed. If your brain is stressed, it will shut down. And that's a fact. Yes. Also look into sort of coaching versus teaching as well. There's lots of language coaches and neuro language coaches online. It's easier to coach a student if you're doing one-to-one -one with them, but you can take elements of neuro language coaching and implement them into your teaching. Again, a lot of it's about, you know, the state that your brain has to be in, in order to learn. But all of this stuff's super useful, super, super useful. 
Do you want me to go on? <laughs> I could go. I could I, sit here all day. <laughs> <laughs> I um actually interviewed a neuro language coach. She's also a business coach, and she also went into uh, this neuro language coaching, and she applies it, and she really, really loves it. So, if teachers feel that they are at a certain level with their teaching, teaching experience, and they would like to work with you, how could they work with you? <laughs> good question like I said I'm still transitioning so at the moment I don't have a solid product or service but I would just encourage people to you know follow me online follow my podcast and just keep an eye on what I'm doing because I will be producing things that I can sell but if if anybody just needs like a bit of advice about something just dm me I'm more than happy to help on that level I'm trying to transition into working with schools as well. So, you know, if you think that my services might be good for your school, talk to your director, talk to your manager. You never know what we may be able to work out. Yes, yes. <laughs> I think schools do need that. I think we, we went through all the questions that I had today. Thank you again for accepting to be here today. And um, and uh, teachers who are interested in listening to your podcast are going to find a link under the recording, under this podcast, to check it out. Thank okay. you very much. My pleasure. Thank you very much for having me.